welcome to the Pig and Whistle Tales from Azeroth. As always here at the Pig and Whistle Inn in Stormwind, I go for a variety of subjects with regards to World of Warcraft. So grab a bottle or a pint, sit back and enjoy. This episode we'll be going over sort of the my uh, hardcore WoW experience, uh, where I've gotten up to, what I've seen, uh, the people that I've encountered, you know, the stats behind it, everything uh, to do with WoW uh, hardcore. But we will get into the weekly news as always. Best Rickron and the Zakali Elders are your world bosses for the week. Best Rickron is located in the Waking Shore and the Zakali Elders in the Zaralak Caverns. Shadowpan Showdown is your brawl for the week. Shadowpan Showdown is a 6v6 brawl where essentially there is a boss in the middle of the arena and you have to kill the enemy team's boss whilst also trying to basically survive because if you die in an arena you get uh, rezzed but... It means that you're not in the fight for as long so the enemy team can kill your boss, you know, etc. World Quest bonus event is that this week. This means that you get more reputation for each World Quest that you complete. This is really good for me because I'm trying to get the um, Daughter of the Sea-like music box from the Proudmoor Admiralty rep. And I have not been able to get it yet and I'm really annoyed. So hopefully I can get it this week. Um, volcanic, Spiteful and uh, Fortified are your mythic fixes for the week. Volcanic, uh, essentially there'll be a small volcano underneath you and it will detonate once uh, or after a few seconds. Essentially you do not want to be on this volcano. Please don't stand in it. Help your healers out. It, it It's really easy to like dodge. So don't get hit by it. Your healers will not appreciate it. Spiteful, when you kill a mob, a spiteful shade will appear from this mob. It will fixate on a target and go towards them. You simply want to push this away, not deal with it, CC it. It will kill itself in time, or you can do a little bit of damage to it with, like, cleave and stuff, you know, to pump up the details meter and the damage meter, you know. Fortified is your final fix for this week, and that is uh, Tyrannical is the boss. Yep, Fortified. Any mob that isn't a boss will have more... in. Uh, more health and damage uh, so make sure you bring a talent build that can accommodate this and Shadowmorn is the weapon that we'll be looking at Shadowmorn is one that doesn't have necessarily a lot of history but it was created um, well I kind of thought because Ice Crown was uh, announced a few days ago or whatever the, it, it's probably the best time to talk about Shadowmorn so Shadowmorn is a weapon that is uh, introduced in Wrath of the Lich King, patch 3.3, for Death Knights, Paladins, Warriors. There's probably another one in there, but I can't remember exactly. Um, and it's essentially a legendary quest line for these classes to obtain this axe. So uh, here's a little bit about it. Essentially, um, Death Knights insisted that the Ashbringer and uh, the skills of the Argent Crusaders, though potent, aren't enough to best Frostmourne alone. They swear that Darian Mograin has long been uh, quietly aware of another legendary blade, one that could be the key to defeating the Lich King and cleansing Northrend, but it doesn't exist yet. So for the moment, the weapon is a formless idea with uh, no more killing power than an angry thought. When it is spoken of, it is spoken quietly, and the High Lord has a habit of silencing those who discuss it in public. But the hope of the artifact to rival Frostmourne is strong within the minds of the Ebon Blade. Just its name inspires the furnaces to burn light or late into the night, the bellows to pump air, and the darker half of the verdicts Smith, verdict Smiths to swing their hammers until their fingers fail. While other craftsmen, craftsmen crafters lean over Waitstone and gather pitted blades by the hundreds. These few dream of a single weapon to end the war of Northrend. Shadowmorn, a great two-handed axe fit for a giant born of sacred and corrupt powers, host of a thousand dead souls and able to be wielded only by the most stalwart arms masters of Azeroth. Its creation seems nearly impossible and yet the rumours do not cease. Some smiths claim that Shadowmorn must be nothing more than an ordinary axe honed to unparalleled perfection, while others shape it as a weapon of immense import in the world. Mograin, when he can be convinced to speak of it all, is said to believe that the, only, 
that only the hammer of Arthur's himself will provide a worthy model. But such absurd ambition is just the beginning of Shadowmon's creation. To contain the energies uh, uh, that dance across its cold edges, Shadowmon must be hewn from piles of impure Saronite, the hardened blood of the old god yogg saron Treated only by master metal shapers, to fuel its power to kill, it is vital that Shadowmon be drenched in the souls of the most potent servants of the Scourge as they are slain, one by one with, unfinished, with the unfinished blade. To help break through the Lich King's armour, Shadowmon is to be adorned with fragments of the Frozen Throne, originally crafted by Kil'jaeden out of the ice from the Twisting Nether. Only with these mighty components, it said, can Shadowmorn be finished, and yet, even if the axe could be completed, questions and fears remain, is forging the souls of the deceased into a weapon treated with blood and the essence of a twisting nether, truly any different from crafting uh, of the Scourge's rune blades? Who is it to say that a Lich King wouldn't simply annihilate or control the Maker, for their impudence in mimicking his most treasured possession. If Arthas, one of the most dedicated knights of his age, lost his humanity to the whispers of Frostmourne, might Shadowmourne bring the same doom and misery to the living as its sister Blade? Without knowing the answers to these questions, who should be bold enough to try and wield it? So, essentially, for Shadowmourne you have a really long questline. You have multiple weeks of doing Ice Crown Citadel, the raid, and you have to get, I think, like 25 Primordial Saronite, which drop off of the bosses in the raid. I'm not sure if you can buy it via gold. You can in retail, but probably not in Wrath of the Lich King when it first comes out. Um, you need to be able to kill the bosses on a certain difficulty uh, in a certain order. So you can go kill one boss, come back, hand in the quest, get the next quest, you know, that kind of deal. But... There are multiple steps to this, and it will take you about two to three weeks maximum, or minimum, definitely three weeks minimum, unless you get really lucky with the Primordial Saronite, or can just buy it off the auction house. I'm not sure if you can, but I'm pretty sure you will be able to in Ice Crown. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, essentially, the Shadowmourne Blade is a blade that can be crafted by those in uh, game. And when you do finish the quest line for Shadowmourne, you get the legendary weapon, which is really cool. But you can also go around and there's dialogue with certain NPCs because you get a cash uh, from Arthas that you don't usually get when uh, you kill him normally without the use of Shadowmourne. And this cash holds many items. I'm not going to go into detail with them. I don't want to spoil anything. But essentially, it's very lore significant for each character what they get in return out of this cache essentially and you get some dialogue and stuff and some really cool bits and pieces a mount tabard um a teleport thing like you can get some really good pieces essentially but let's get straight into the main part of the episode we'll say so my world of warcraft hardcore experience started like everyone else's uh at a level one uh le level one undead mage in the brill now, I've never done Horde side of questing, but I, I found it relatively enjoyable. I like the Barons. I really do like the Barons. I know I've always liked the Barons, but I've never committed to making a Horde character in Classic. So I've seen my fair share of the Barons. I did Wailing Caverns, Ragefire Chasm, all of that stuff. I get to about level 23-ish. You know, I've I've had maybe one or two scares. I think I had... My very first scare of dying was at the harpies in the top left of uh, the barons because I may or may not have pulled three or four, tried to AOE them down and accidentally pulled an invisible mob, uh, invisible harpy that patrolled. Um, survived, which was nice and pretty, pretty easy, to be honest. Um, but as I was doing this, I was going through hardcore and I like to... I personally want to go through hardcore solo, I don't necessarily want to group up like a lot of people. Like, I've seen loads of people group up for shitty, like, quests that you can do solo, but people are so scared of dying, it's ridiculous. I saw someone grouping up to... Now, don't get me wrong, this is a bit of a tricky one for, like, certain classes and stuff, 
and it's a tricky one for anything actually level 10 you know orgrimmar top right in the cave you go and kill the dude who's got the void walker people were looking to group up with that and i was like mm, i'd rather risk it to be honest the risk is part of the fun of hardcore in my opinion especially at level 10 come on you you just gotta figure it out come on really um but yeah, this has led to some interesting interactions because I obviously don't want to group with certain people and there's a lot of people in these zones at the moment in terms of like the lower level zones, crossroads, um, high end of Duratar, Cheers for Glades, you know, that kind of deal. Uh, level like 10 to 30 is quite packed, I would say, because obviously people are dying constantly and remaking their characters, etc, etc. Um, so I get to like certain quests... And it's like, oh, group up. And like, I'm tagging a mob. And I've tagged the mob like before anyone showed up. And uh, they're trying to invite me to a group like Spam Invite Me. And I try to explain to them, sorry, I just want to go about my business like solo. I don't want to group up in any way apart from like dungeons. And they get so pissy. People get so pissy. It's like, okay, I want to play this my way. I, I want to play well, hardcore my way. I want to do it solo. And I just want to power through it. And, you know, I, I don't want to group up for anything that can possibly be done solo. Even elite quests, I don't want to necessarily group up because I'll always try and solo them. Um, but, yeah, this has led to some interesting and flavorful, um, is that a word? Yes. Uh, messages, I would, I guess, um, is the best way to say that. But the first real dickish thing that I came across was around level 33, but I'll get to that. Um, at level 23 to 24, I started AoE farming. And as a mage, I've played a mage for three years, I think, back in Classic. Um, all the way through TBC, and then late TBC, I switched to my Druid. Um, but yeah, I, I played a lot of mage in Classic. A lot of mage. And uh, I did a lot of AoE pulls. I did the Mara one pool. I did Scarlet Monastery. I tried Zulgrub, but it wasn't as enjoyable for me. Um, I enjoyed Mara a lot more, I'm not going to lie. But essentially, these are all giant AoE pools where you're pulling. Marauding was like 200 plus mobs in one go. And if one wrong move, and you can just get absolutely slapped, essentially. Um, but... Yeah, I, I do AoE pulls, and at level 24, you don't necessarily have the best survivability, but you, you have enough to kill the mobs and such. So I, I trudge through the levels, level 24 to 30, you know, I do my own thing. I haven't done a quest for a while. Um, I will say this now, I have not done a quest for about... Okay, that's kind of a lie, because there are quests in Tanaris where you kill the pirates and get the pirate hats, but... I grabbed them anyway because I'm AoE farming the pirates, so why wouldn't I? So if you exclude them, technically I've not done a quest for about 30-odd levels, I would say, which is pretty impressive, to be honest. That is the definition of uh, WoW Classic grinding. Um, but yeah, essentially I get to like level 30 and I start heading to... Um, well, Hillsbrab was where I was. I was killing the farmers there. And then I killed the farmers in Arathi Highlands. Holy shit, I just killed a load of farmers from, like, level 24 to 35. <laughs> Jesus, okay, that's a lot. Um, but, yeah, I, I get to about level 35. No, level 32. I've been at Arathi Highlands for a little bit of time now, you know, that kind of deal. Logging in and out just as and when I want to. Um, logging out at the little horde town and stuff. And running over to the, like, area, essentially. And there's another mage there. And, uh, okay, it, it's not great, it's not the most ideal, but I'm like, there's enough mobs for the both of us. So I start pulling some mobs, I round them up, and I start AoEing. And if you know anything about mage AoE pulling, um, what, he's, what he then goes and does is pulls more mobs into the blizzard so that it's like a little bit spread out um and essentially this mob like pack that i have now is a little bit wonky because there's some mobs in there that are a bit higher health and you know at that level you don't necessarily have the resources to deal with anything that's like miss 
any mishaps that are happening in your pool. It, it's got to be relatively clean is the best way that I'll say it. Um, but yeah, he's pulling mobs and I'm just saying, dude, stop. And he's like, uh, you ruined... Uh, I'm pretty sure this is what he said. You ruined my respawns. And I'm like, dude, okay. First of all, this is an MMO. This is a mass multiplayer online game. You are not the only one in this world. There are more than enough mobs we can share. And he's like, no, this is ridiculous. How fucking dare you? And he just starts going off. And I'm like, okay, I I can't be asked with this guy. So I just carry on doing my like AOE pulls and, you know, I I'm, I think that he'll just get over himself and figure out a way to, you know, share like the little kid that he is. Um, but essentially he tries to fuck me over again and try and get me killed. Um, in which case I managed to kill everything that he brought into my AOE pack, you know, a little bit of extra uh, thing for me. Um, I, I think a couple of the mobs were obviously tagged because he's just pulling them. but. Yeah, a little bit extra XP and stuff, a little bit more, you know, practice with the AoE because I'm a little bit rusty still. I haven't done this for about two, three years, the AoE pulls. Um, but yeah, I'm just, uh, I say to this guy, dude, stop. Like, what are you doing? Are you like trying to grief or something? Um, speaking of, I saw a clip where someone tried to do the exact same thing in Arathi Highlands and a GM. Uh, I think froze one of the gnomes and tried to kill him almost, but that could be completely false. I might have made that up, but I'm pretty sure like I've seen clips of like people uh, making a ticket about someone trying to grief and then them getting like repercussions, the griefer. So I'm pretty sure it is like quite bad to do this. Um, but yeah, essentially he's, yeah, he's, he's trying to kill me, but he's failing completely. Um, now me being a mage player, I know how to grief AOE pools. So I'm, I'm just sat there drinking and he's done this a couple of times or a few times, so either or like two to four. And I'm like, okay, fuck it. If he wants to play this game, I'm playing this game. He's got an AOE pool and he's using his blizzard. Um, everything's stacked up decently, but not perfectly. So what the best way to do to fuck someone over is to frost nova half of the group. You frost nova half of the like back end of the group. That way, the AOE pool is stretched and making this like think of it as uh, this. You want all of the mobs in a bundle in like a yeah a ball, and if you stretch this ball, some of them run faster, some of them run slower, so it gets out of whack and you just can't control all of them as effectively essentially. Um, so I know how to fuck people over, essentially, as a, a mage, uh, um, like, who has AoE pulled before, and I know what I wouldn't want. So I start fucking him over, I start adding new mobs to it and stuff. He manages, uh, so he has about four or five mobs on him, very low, they're all about, like, 20%. He's at, like, 20% with no mana, or, like, 10% mana, and he blocks and because I did tag the mobs, the mobs did go to me. But my mistake was I blocked instantly as well. But they didn't. The mobs didn't go back onto him, which is what I wanted. So if I waited for his block to run out, then I could have ice blocked, and the mobs would have went onto him. So I could have potentially killed him. But yeah, he basically ran away, and uh, we sat down, had a little chat, and. Uh, I'm literally just saying to him, you're trying to fuck me over, so I'm going to fuck you over. I'm literally going to hang around like a bad smell if you do not, like, quit being a baby. Like, I will just hang around being a bad smell. I'm more than happy to just share, like, the mobs and stuff. But if you're going to be a dick, I'm literally just going to sit here and wait for you to pull, and I will fuck you over. Like, and stuff like that. And... Uh, he he just instantly logs. He's he doesn't want any of that. Um which is I mean it's a fair choice, I guess. But honestly, why can't people just fucking share? It's an MMO. You are not entitled to the mobs in the game. They are not property of your character. They are there for everyone to kill. If someone else turns up, fine, then I have to share with them as well. 
or like I have to deal with it. But you have to deal with respawns constantly because it's a living world. It's an MMO. It's not a fucking single player game. Like, it's ridiculous. But yeah, anyway, I think that's the only person that I've really had a problem with. I don't recall anything else um, that I've had a problem with or anyone that I've had a problem with, I should say. Um, yeah, it, it's something. I go through all of my leveling. I, I get very close to dying, I think, towards uh, the Murlocs. I think the Murlocs were the closest call that I've had um, when AoE farming. That's at, like, level uh, 39, 40-ish, something like that. It, Murlocs are always annoying. They just sound awful. And essentially, I ice block. I come out of the ice block. I frost over them. And there's these fucking wooden sticks in the ground that I couldn't see because they blend in with, like the background and i just get stuck on them and nearly die that's about it uh, that's probably the closest that i've come to dying um yeah i can't really remember much else i've uh, i'm trying to remember there are other mages that i've come into contact with that are aoe farming but i don't think any that are like um oh no i remember one i do remember one there was a little gnome I was like drinking and uh, this was in Tenaris. This is at the Pirates in Tenaris. I'm level 48, something like that. I think around that. Um, essentially, I'm AOE pulling and I'm just drinking, waiting for respawns. The respawns come up and as I'm about to pull, this gnome runs just ahead of me and is starting to pull everything as well. So, you know, everything's gathered up and I do a quick arcane explosion, a rank one arcane explosion and tag everything. And as I tag everything, the gnome just looks at me and, like, you know, does some emotes or whatever. I don't really know. But he instantly logs out. Okay, that that's fine. So he must just want to wait. Uh, he instantly logs out or wants to layer. So he's. I think, okay, he's clearly just going to wait until I'm done because I was, I've been here for a while. I'm literally only going to need one or two more bars, you know, and then I'm going to go train and log out. Um but yeah, I get a message about two minutes later from a level one in Northshire Abbey. Um, I definitely can't repeat what was said uh, here, but it was a very colourful uh, language, we will say. Very colourful. And it ended in uh, me having to unalive myself, I think, is... Uh, the, the best way to put that. <laughs> he was so angry over one AOE pool. And I just I just don't get why people get that angry. It's hilarious. That is probably the fastest I've ever got a rage message in the game. I was basically on top of him doing the same pool. And I just happened to tag all the mobs first with an arcane explosion. That's it. That That's literally it. He had the opportunity to. If he did, then I would have been like, nah, that was well, shit, oh well. And then I'll go on to like my next pull. And that's it. it. It's really not that big of a deal. But yeah, it, it was something to behold, that message. I, I don't know. It's been very colourful. Um, the, the only people that I've gotten hate from are two other mages, which are AoEing as well. That, that's about it. Um... My mage actually is doing all right, though. It's level 55 now, and it's still not done a quest for about 30-odd levels. It is simply AoE farming mobs, and, you know, I'm five levels off of max level, which is really impressive. My goal for Hardcore WoW was to get to level 40, and I've exceeded that, and I'm more than happy with what I've done already. I'm more than happy with what I've done, and if I was to die at level 55, 56, 57... By all means, I die. It's not going to make it or break it for me. I have really enjoyed the experience of it, and I, I've i done what I wanted. I I have hit the heights that I wanted in Classic. I got my mount, um, not died for 55 levels, and I'm pretty happy with that. That being said, I do have a couple more other characters. I have a Hunter that's level 21 as well, and I think I have a level 11 Warlock that I'm playing with someone um yeah both really fun characters i do enjoy hunter a lot more uh in classic because it's a lot simpler to the likes of retail and stuff like that but no i i think hardcore is a very 
very good. It's it's something that people can just sink their teeth into and replay constantly. And by all means, it's amazing. It's one of the most fun, and yet I can turn my brain off, like, experiences of WoW I've ever had. Now, this being said, I've seen loads of clips and stats of, like, people dying and all of that. So, I think the average level people get to when they die... This is the average level across worldwide. This is average level worldwide. I think it's like level 11 or like it's so low. The average level from when people die, it's crazy. And I just, I just don't understand how you see like heat maps of stuff. You see heat maps um, on Twitter where people are like, oh, this is the heat map of Duratar. And you can kind of see, okay, yeah, there's a shit ton of people that die in this cave. <laughs> There's a shit ton of people that die in this cave. If you look at every heat map, it's just a cave. Don't go into a cave at low level. It it's a death trap. Um, that's the best way that I can ex- like put that essentially. Because uh, yeah, every heat map that you see about where people have died on hardcore is in a cave. Um, which is quite funny. I'm not gonna lie. There have been some raids in hardcore already. Ragnaros was killed. Very early on, I think like over two weeks ago or something at this point. Um, but yeah, people have done uh, Naxxramas. Not fully cleared, but a few bosses in Naxxramas, which is really impressive. Um, although they are the easier bosses, Anubrakan, um, Felina, and uh, Maixna. I think it's Maixna that they've cleared as well. I can't quite remember. Um, but yeah, it's the easier bosses, which is to be expected. Um, it'll be really cool to see the first like Kel'Thuzad kill. I think that'll be really, really impressive. Um, those who can do that. Uh, but yeah, it's it's really fun. Honestly, WoW Hardcore is something that I would recommend to anyone. It's such a great laugh if you've got people that you can play it with. Honestly, do it. It is an amazing time, and I can't recommend it enough. It's so chilled. Well, chilled for me, but it might be a bit more. Uh, tougher for other people in terms of like they might have to really focus on it but that is it for this episode thank you all very much for listening do check out all of the socials down below tiktok youtube twitch all of it can be found down below and please support the channel via the link down below from as little as three dollars a month it will really help boost the channel get more episodes out and more content for you guys but that is it once again thank you all very much for listening and go with valor friend goodbye all <laughs>